Awesome. Well, welcome to another episode of the Brand Builder Show. Today we're talking all things inventory management, which might not sound like the sexiest of topics, but it is absolutely essential for the growth of your business. And joining me today is Chelsea from SoStock. Chelsea, great to have you on the show today. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, and we're going to talk, like I say, all things inventory management, which you are, I want to say, an expert in. Obviously, uh, you know, you guys have built this amazing software system that I am a, a user of and absolutely love it. And, uh, you know, we get great feedback on on the processes that it helps us put in place. So we're going to dive into all of that. But uh, why don't you catch the listeners up on your your kind of your journey with selling on Amazon when you got started and, and how that sort of transitioned into what you do now? Sure. Yeah. So um, my husband and I started selling in 2014. Uh, private label business. We, we had some friends who had taken a course, so we took the same course and got started, got selling right away. Um, the product that we launched, it was a, a success pretty immediately, and so we were able to, in the next uh, six, seven months, quit our jobs and go full-time. So we've been full-time in the Amazon space ever since. And um, yeah, just uh, along the way found that my biggest passion is actually helping other entrepreneurs. So, you know, selling physical products to me um, was an exciting way to come into this space. But then I found more and more we started becoming mentors, started being mm. asked to speak in different places, and so that has become a, a really big passion as well. We still have our Amazon business, um, but obviously we are doing other things with entrepreneurs as well. Yeah, so good. I was going to ask actually if you still were actively selling on Amazon. What what are your plans there long term? Are you all aboard the exit train, or are you holding on to it for a long time? Or yeah, we're going to hold on to it for now. It's it's a very it, it's very educational as well. To you know, as you're building, I don't understand sometimes when people build uh, softwares to serve someone when they don't in fact use the tool mm. themselves or understand that. So um, mm. it's been you know, a great, I mean, it's funny to say it's been great the, the last 18 months to, you know, have to suffer through all the things that have been going on in the inventory and mm. the logistics space, but it's been great to be part of that uh, for research purposes. So anything mm. that goes wrong in our business, I just turn to my husband and say, you know, this is great research. We're learning how to, <laughs> you know, how to fix these problems for other people too. Yeah. It's so true. Like we, we have a course and do some coaching and stuff. And I, and I often think, how do some people do this? you know, after selling or as a, a, we're not even selling at all. You know, it's like it, to, to, it's such an industry where you need to stay on the cutting edge that it, uh, yeah, I would definitely struggle with that. Yeah. Um, but but that's that's great for you guys. And obviously that's led to, you know, part of what you're doing now with, with so Stocks. Um, talk to us a bit about that journey. How did you decide you wanted to get into the, the software space? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have any background in software. I mean, I didn't have background in Amazon, but that's kind of, you know, how, how it goes for entrepreneurs. Uh, recognize the problem in my own business. I have a background in, in bookkeeping, work for a financial management firm. So I really enjoyed digging into numbers and wanted to mm. understand what was happening with my margins. You know, as time mm. went on, profit margins getting slimmer. Um, Certain things you can't control. Amazon raising their prices, you can't control, you know, the market getting crowded and, and prices coming down. All of these things, you know, the fees, all of those things you can't control. But the thing that I could control was I was stocking out and then I was having to air freight or I was having to, you know, relaunch and all of these things that just really make it very expensive to run a business on Amazon. So, you know, all those extra costs to just get back in stock, uh, the lost revenue, those were things I could get a better handle on, was the inventory side of things. How can I make sure that I don't over order? How can I make sure that I don't under order um, and get it more right more of the time? Is that That's kind of how I, I started out with the, the concept that I needed to do something in that. Mm. Yeah, and obviously, so stock does is evolved over time. Tell us a little yeah. bit about uh, what it does for those that are listening that maybe have never used uh, inventory management software. What, what is it that this tool does that you'd have yeah. to do manually otherwise? Yeah. So um, the thing that I noticed, I had tried some other softwares and they didn't seem to work so well. They would work for some products, not for others. Mm. And I was talking to friends of mine. You know, what are you guys using uh, in these various masterminds I was a part of? And they said, you know, it, it's. Uh, We've tried things, nothing seems to work, we're back to spreadsheets. So that kind of was a light bulb moment of 
even though people are building software for inventory, spreadsheets is the choice of seven and eight figure sellers over the automation of a software because it's not accurate enough. And so mm. we really wanted to, to jump in. We, that was in, in 2018. I actually met my business partner. We built out a platform and launched um, in July of 2019 to 25 sellers and we basically incubated and found out what is it about the spreadsheets that's working what is it that's not working how can we streamline this and it was once we had gotten that narrowed down it took about six months to get that kind of dialed in we ripped out the original forecast and put in a new forecast and at that point people started uh word of mouth started picking up and so essentially it's taking all of those data that inventory is really it's simple and it's complex um, it's simple in that you basically want to know two things. You want to know how much do I order and by when do I order it. So that's the simplicity of it to kind of break it down. The complexity comes into how to get to those two, those two numbers, right? The, the order date and the, you know, the quantity. And so the software takes all these different variables, you know, how much you're selling, how fast you're selling, um, how long it takes for your stuff to get from your supplier you know to being live on amazon uh what you have planned in terms of marketing which was a huge piece there was marketing was missing in mm. pretty much the whole a amazon space i you know worked with eight figure sellers who wouldn't plot their marketing against their inventory and would cause stock out simply by you know being so marketing aggressive without mm -hmm. vetting their inventory. And so yeah. all of those variables then basically inside of the software, um, you're able to put all those variables in and figure out those those two numbers, the how much mm -hmm. and, and when. Yeah, and I've noticed from using the software, it's very, very flexible in that, and it does help you forecast so much more than uh, than any spreadsheet might, and uh, you know, even allows you to uh, forecast for different shipping methods. You know, you can ship some, you know, goods by an express method and some by a longer method, and you know, yeah. it's so uh, so flexible in that. So you've done a, a great job at, with that. Um, talk to me just a little bit briefly, just out of personal interest. The, the, the software building journey, how, how's that been? How have you found it? It's been interesting because, you know, you, you get this, uh, like, I didn't want to go and find someone to hopefully build something, right? I, was, I had no experience. I could go and hire a developer and they could just lie to me and take forever mm. and all of that. So the way that I actually got started was I was, I decided, well, I'll just have to meet somebody, you know, very, very casually just kind of have this thought, I'll just have to meet somebody. And then two weeks later, I spoke at an event um, and the co-founder of Thomason was there and we ended up going out and hanging out, you know, in a little group um, of us during the weekend. And I knew his software, I'd used it in 2015 and, you know, we, we got along during this, this little event and he kept saying you know I'm so bored I need a new software project and so I kept pitching him I'm like you know there's this problem in the Amazon space and I he was just like oh yeah I kind of you know brush it off and then my husband went back to him and he goes she wants to build it with you she doesn't want to just have you build it because he didn't have any you know he didn't really know much about the space so it was this idea of this combination between him knowing the, the software side and me knowing the Amazon side um, and us getting together. And so I basically plugged into his system of he had, you know, his, his developers that built his other software, software companies and his partner, who's now my partner, who was brilliant in marketing. And so he had everything and he was just looking for the next project to launch. And I happened to convince him that this was enough of a need um, and enough of a market that this is something that we could we could go out and do. And so we started on that. We launched uh, very organically with, like I said, 25 people. And then the word of mouth started picking up. And it really has been just the fact that, I mean, I personally, the year, the year and a half, the first year and a half we were live, I onboarded personally hundreds of, of sellers. I was, I was the only one talking to sellers, getting them into the software. Dan, my business partner, was the only one doing the help desk tickets. So the only people talking to and getting feedback from the sellers for the first year and a half of we're now two years live, a little over two years live, were the founders. And so mm -hmm. we got that direct feedback and figured out how to get it into the software as quickly as possible. 
I, I'm pretty sure Dan's the only person I've spoke to with any challenges I've had. You know, any things that I've needed help with in the software. So I can attest to I can attest to the truth of that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've now we're now expanding. My husband now runs all of the help desk tickets. We've got a couple of other people, but it's just been very. We've we always wanted to be very connected with the sellers mm -hmm. um, as we as we grew because I feel like that's that's the time when you get into trouble when you have this kind of this barrier between you know support and the mm -hmm. actual user because we had people say you know oh I told this software company that I wanted it to be this way I've told told them for the past two years and you guys I told you and you had it three months later so that's been kind of the magic uh, the magic bullet for us has been you know go figure listening to the people mm. that you're serving <laughs> yeah and that's a huge thing i think for private label sellers as well because you the closer you are to your target audience and you're hearing what they're saying and you iterate based on what they're saying it's huge for your business i, yeah. I remember a video editing software that we were using and i said to the founder it'd be great if you could do this with it and he literally had it shipped within a few days you know and yeah. and i was like wow you've got a customer in me, in me because of that and you guys are the same and it helps build like long-term customers and uh, so it's, yeah, super, super powerful. Great, yeah. great insight there in, in building a business in any industry, I think. Yep, true. So talk to us a bit about strategy, inventory management then, uh, aside from sort of the software side of it. Um, it your, your software, obviously, you're a, um, a great software, you're a big proponent of it, but do, do you recommend it for brand new sellers? At what point does it become like a useful tool for a seller in their journey? Right, yeah. So I usually say, you know, once you've got more than a couple of SKUs, it's good to start with a more um, a more refined software like ours. There are other tools that have uh, an inventory piece built into it. It's not they're not very flexible. But if you're just starting out, you know that's going to be fine. I know cost becomes a, a real issue. So uh, not wanting to you know, get yourself invested in too many monthly payments when you're still trying to launch your product, you're still trying to figure everything out, can tend to be a distraction. So, you know, if you're signed up for, you know, managed by staff or one of these software suites, they have these tools built into them. You can use that for a while, but it's when you're starting to launch multiple, multiple products and, or you're finding that you're not, you're stocking out and you don't know why. Some of the some of the formulas that are used are a little bit less sophisticated, and so they can cause you to stock out. Or maybe you have the the you you want to do you know marketing planning within your inventory, and so we usually uh, start working with people who are you know a couple of products deep into their into their business, just specifically for you know what we're what we're doing. But any mm -hmm. anyone should start early on to to get a handle on how to track inventory. Mm. Yeah, and because it's so much more than just tracking the numbers, right? Because I know what we get complimented on, I think I might have mentioned it to you, but, uh, you know, I th I one of our three PLs recently said, oh, you know, the, the process is, is great. I just wanted to say well done on the process. And I'm like, well, I'd love to take the credit for it. But uh -huh. um, and that's, you know, the, what you guys have built is the that end to end, because there's so much more to inventory management than just how many units do I have in stock? When do I need right. to reorder? It's, you know, shipping to a 3PL, it's, you know, shipping plans on Amazon, sending it all in. And so, um, you know, that's where I think having that specialist help is is good. And, and not that I'm trying to like, uh, you know, make this whole episode about promoting so stock, but at the same time, you know, um, it, it's, you, you've got to think about the cost of stocking out and the cost of, you know, not having those things in place. So, you know, when you begin to scale up, I think that's because we've got a smaller brand and, and I don't use it on that yet. We just have a spreadsheet, whereas the, the bigger brand that I manage is, is I, honestly, I couldn't live without it, you know. So, um, yeah. So uh, what would you say, though, are some when it comes from your experience with inventory, inventory management for those newer sellers? Um, maybe they're not using a, a software tool yet. What are some of the best practices that you could recommend? Here's some key things to make sure you're doing to stay on top of this. Yeah, so the two things that I always say um, ha have been missing in Amazon, like, you know, coming into building a software, I started to realize how little education and understanding there was around that and what are those basics that even, like I mentioned, eight-figure sellers did not have. Mm. And so, you know, we all are marketers first and then we, you know, kind of the rest of the business follows the marketing and so it's us trying to kind of catch up to that you know educationally the the cash flow and the um, logistics and, and the inventory 
So the two things that, if you only did these two things, would be extremely impactful. The first would be buffer stock, also known as safety stock. So for anyone that doesn't know what buffer stock is, essentially it's saving extra stock and pretending like when you hit that buffer stock, you've actually stocked out. So everything is dependent upon you getting your inventory to arrive to, you know, let's say, you know, FBA before you start eating into that buffer stock so that anything that goes wrong, that buffer stock can act as a cushion, kind of like when you're driving a car and your empty light comes on, you're not literally running out of gas. You are, um, you have enough to get to the, to the station to fill up your tank. Buffer stock is like that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. And um, yeah, I, I've definitely noticed a real uh, yeah, help with having that as well. Having that in there, it's, uh, it's so helpful to not only just plan your stock, but just have a bit of peace of mind, right? Yes, <laughs> you exactly. Because, uh... you know, things happen like, you know, the, uh, the power outages that are, that are going on in China or, you know, you mm -hmm. got a storm that's, that's, you know, you weren't predicting. All of these things that, you know, that are with are out of your control, at least you have that extra cushion to kind of make yeah. up for that. Yeah. And, and for much newer sales, I think I saw you have like a um, spreadsheet on your website, right? That you yes. can download so they could get started with that if they're not ready yet for so stocked. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That, and that was something, a lot of the best practices that uh, are in the software we've put into the, the spreadsheet as well so that you can mm. start learning and applying the inventory best practices like buffer stock and like, you know, tracking your marketing, which is the, the other thing that I would recommend um, to any new seller is starting to figure out how does your marketing need to be accounted for in your inventory orders? Yeah. Because if you've got, say, 90 days or more in terms of your lead time, the time it takes from the order being placed to being live on Amazon, you need to know that your marketing, if you do a big sale, how are you going to recover from that? Some big sale happens and you didn't plan for it. Well, then, you know, you have to wait. There's that huge gap. It's not like, you know, okay, we'll get on the phone and order, you know, and have it repl replenished in a week. So, so marketing, uh, it, I call it inventory minded marketing actually, uh, created that kind of catchphrase just to, mm -hmm. to drive home to people, you know, that this is actually something that, you know, needs to be, needs to be thought thought through every time you start marketing is you need to remember that inventory needs to know this as well. Yeah, yeah, especially as you're scaling your business, right? And you've got team members and, you know, you've got a marketing guy that's like, yeah, let's launch these campaigns and sell loads of products. And you've got inventory over here that's like, no, slow down. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I yeah. And, and the interesting thing is, like, I've talked to, to many different people. Sometimes it's the same person. Sometimes the person who does the marketing is, you know, the husband, the person who does you know, the inventory is the wife and they lay their head down on a pillow next to each other every single night and yet don't coordinate this point. They live in the same house, they work in the same house, but they don't coordinate that because there's so much going on and also there's just not a system in place mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Not a standard operating procedure for every mm -hmm. time I put a marketing plan together, this is what I'm going to do, right? Yeah, no, it's really good, really good. Uh, talking about when it comes to scaling, obviously we talked about newer sellers. What about when you are starting to scale your business? You know, you're starting to do fifty thousand, hundred thousand a month, lots of SKUs. You know, have you, have you got any more sort of uh, you know, insight that you can give to what are the best practices at that stage? Yeah. So um, one of the things that I that I recommend, kind of at that point, is really starting to understand your logistics um, and your cash flow. Uh, mm -hmm. better at that point and those are those are things I'm becoming more obsessed with and that's kind of the direction that so stuff will be headed in we'll be getting into more of the cash flow and the logistics but um, really kind of dialing in you know your marketing and dialing in you know beyond just the marketing team tells the inventory team what their plans are and the inventory team makes sure that those plans can actually be you know properly ex executed without stocking out now it's the inventory team should be creating these reports, should be creating uh, something called an overstock report, which is, you know, what products do I have sitting at Amazon, for example, that are, say, 90 days uh, overstocked, right? Create an overstock report, send that to the marketing team, create a slow seller report, which could be a range. It could be, okay, every, any product that sells over five units 
but under 20 units is a slow seller. And that's kind of a make break of either make this product more successful or it's going to fall into the liquidation zone. And then you have the liquidation report, which is anything, for example, under five units a day is something that we have to liquidate and get rid of. That's not going to be a product that's going to be extremely viable. Of course, it depends on your business what those numbers are, but those reports should be created by your by inventory and sent to marketing so that marketing can uh, essentially market across the entire catalog, which we have not been used to doing uh, up until restock limits and IPI limits became an issue because we could just put stuff in there and if it sold, it sold. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't really matter. There were fees, you know, storage fees, but. We didn't really care much about them. We wanted to push our best sellers and drive revenue. Now we have to drive revenue and drive sell-through. Yeah, which is a perfect segue into the next topic. And this really is where it comes into, you know, gone are the days of just being able to know how to rank a product on Amazon, right? You need to be able to right. build a business, uh, understand the, these different aspects of business. And that is a big part of it now is, is restock limits. Uh, right. Obviously, you've got your, you know, you've got your IPI, you know, the performance index, you've got your restock limits at both account level and SKU level now, yeah. and then also storage limits, which is not the same as restock limits or <laughs> IPI. Talk to us a bit about these things. How, how, as sellers, how can we get our head around these things? What should we be concerned about, not concerned about? Yeah, so it all gets can get very uh, confusing. What do I focus on? Um, which one's the most important? And honestly, it all boils down to one thing, and that's sell-through. Okay. Sell through basically when you look at restock limits, you look at IPI limits. IPI limits touches, you know, the four points of IPI, the IPI score are sell through, uh, in stock rate, excess inventory, and stranded inventory. And all of those have something to do with sell through. Sell through is basically two things it's sales velocity, right? How many total sales you had. Um, it's actually not sales velocity, it's total sales within a 90 day period. And then utilization, how much inventory are you actually keeping um, at Amazon? And that equates into your sell-through rate. So you can actually calculate what your sell-through rate is, and you want that sell-through rate to go up uh, because your restock limits will go up. Your utilization, uh, your restock limits will, will go up when you increase your sales, mm -hmm. and your IPI will go up when you increase your sales and you reduce the amount of excess inventory, the amount of... Uh, stranded inventory, uh, all of these things touch sell through. So that's basically what Amazon is most concerned about. And so e everything that uh, that we're looking at in terms of you know all these different these different maybe confusing um, rating systems mm -hmm. and limitations are all connected to that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a balance to find, isn't it? Because I know, you know, we just had uh, our limits on one uh, marketplace drop, um, you know, a, a, a bit. And I probably have caused that because I was sending two big uh, shipments directly to Amazon from our supplier. But we had lots of room to send it. And so I thought, let's send it because it saves us the 3PL costs. Right. Um, you know, but then you do that and then it, it affects your limit. And so it really is a balancing act, isn't it? Where, yeah. you know, the extra costs that you incur sending it to a 3PL just to send it to Amazon. Mm -hmm. but then you've got to think about those restock limits, especially coming into seasons like Q4. It's, it's a big deal, right? Yeah. Yep, exactly. you, for, uh, for sellers to increase those restock limits, you're saying, uh, so sell through is the big thing. So send smaller amounts in, sell through it quicker. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I, that I kind of had this great realization uh, probably at about a week or two ago was um, I've been talking about FBM you know, do FBM, um, sell through FBM, have a backup system of FBM. I've been talking about it for almost two years now that you need to have that as a backup system. But the interesting realization that I had is what we know FBM contributes to restock limits. It mm -hmm. contributes to sell through because Amazon's looking at, uh, you know, you have sell through, you have the sales, total sales, and then you have mm -hmm. how much inventory is at FBA. The mm -hmm. total sales includes anything that's sold through Amazon, you know, through FBA, mm -hmm. anything that's sold through FBM. It also includes anything that is sold through another channel that fulfills through FBM. So those are, that's where you get all your sales. So if you have, you know, a multi-channel fulfillment where you're, you're sending Shopify sales through Amazon, 
if you mm -hmm. sell through Amazon, but you're not keeping the stock there, you're keeping it at a fulfillment center. All of these things contribute to the sell through. Yeah. The one thing to keep in mind that the realization that I had was if you have inventory that you can keep at FBM, that's keeping your utilization down while increasing your, your sales on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's actually something where if you want to increase your restock limits even more, if you have a product that is, you know, light and inexpensive to fulfill, it might make sense to move it through uh, an FBM channel to help to increase that restock limit potentially. Yeah, that's a really great thought. It's uh, almost like a little bit of a hack that. Yeah, yeah. That's I cool. had this realization. I'm like, oh, this is like, you know, actually, yeah. if you understand sell through, that's why understanding some of these, you know, what does Amazon call sell through? What are they looking at? Understanding yeah. those things really helps you to kind of get clever about, you know, knowing what are those levers to, to pull to improve, yeah. you know, the situation. So give us those four points again. So it was obviously in stock, stranded. What were the other two? Yeah, so with IPI, it's sell through, and then you yeah. have in stock rate. So when yeah. you're not in stock, that's going to affect your sell through because yeah. you're out of stock on something that used to, you know, positively impact your sales. Right. And then you have excess inventory, which is just bloating your utilization. Mm -hmm. And then you have stranded inventory, which is also um, hurting your utilization because it's inventory that literally can't. It's not attached to a live listing, so it's not yeah. going to be able to sell. So all of those things have impact on sell through. Yeah. What I've noticed about um, stranded inventory is actually Amazon will still fulfill it if you sell it through Shopify or, or something like that. So, mm. again, that's another little yes. thought maybe if, if you're struggling with um, stranded inventory and because uh, we had an issue with like a, a pesticide thing, which is completely ridiculous because it's not related in any way. But you know what Amazon are like. And so we were still able to sell that on Shopify and fulfill it through Amazon. So that's a potential cool. little there as well. Interesting. And it does make sense when you think about it, because, you know, it's just that they don't want the liability of selling it mm. through their platform, but they are very, very eager to get it out of their, yeah, their exactly, warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Crazy. Um, good. Okay. And then just coming into Q4 now, time of recording, who knows when anybody's listening to this, but uh, just coming into busy seasons, uh, you know, where you're going to be picking up uh, sales, any particular tips there, anything people can do? Yeah, so um, like I said, uh, having an FBM system is extremely important. Um, having any sort of backup so that if your stuff is not getting checked into Amazon on time, you still have a way of fulfilling it because you can still take on sales. I, I like to say, you know, even if you're if Amazon's your only sales channel, which means you know where you take sales from, it shouldn't be your only distribution channel. You shouldn't have Amazon be the only one that can send product to your customers. Great so that's kind of the first and the foremost. The other one that I, that I say to people, and it's very, very common for people to stock out, even you know, larger sellers to stock out because they essentially put all their eggs in one basket. So the, the golden rule is don't let anyone have all your stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't put all your stuff on one boat. Don't put all your stuff in one, you know, truck LTL. Have something held back as a backup. So nowadays we put most of our stuff on a boat and then we'll have uh, inventory that we can air freight over only if needed. So you're only mm -hmm. incurring the cost if it's going to prevent a stock out. Otherwise, you know, you continue to produce your next order and then you send it on the next boat and you hold some back and um, if you can work with your, your supplier to negotiate that you only pay them for what you ship and they, and they sometimes can store, you know, say an extra month worth of inventory without cost, mm -hmm. you are then able to control your cash flow a little bit better. So you can increase that order to be able to hold back that extra inventory. Perfect. Yeah. No, that's some great thoughts there. Really good. Very helpful coming into those busy seasons. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but before we close up, I know you're super busy. You've got lots of things to do, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you get off. But any other kind of final tips, final things that you would say to, to anyone just that we haven't covered already? Yeah. So one of the things that um, I've been talking with a friend of mine, he owns a warehouse and I haven't talked mm -hmm. much about this, but uh, very interesting right now, especially coming into the, the, the fourth quarter, there are specific ways that Amazon checks inventory into 
into their warehouses. There's, there's sending things LTL and you know, there's just, you get a truck, it arrives, it's got a trailer and there's two things that could happen. That trailer could either be dropped off and the truck leaves and then they'll get to it when they get to it or that trucker has an agreement that says, I'm only bring, bringing my truck when I can pull it up to the dock and unload it. You can kind of see in terms of what I like to refer to as net check-in time, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the trucker who can just drop off his stuff and leave gets a quicker check-in or a quicker appointment to, to bring his truck into Amazon. But the guy who gets a later appointment and actually gets his stuff removed from the truck and put into the warehouse immediately could have a faster check-in time, even though he's got a much later uh, appointment time. So it's important to understand, it, I would say talk to your uh, warehouse manager mm -hmm. to find out what he knows about which companies to use. One of the companies right now currently is, is a company called T-Force, used to be UPS Freight, was purchased by a Canadian company and is now T-Force. They, uh, they won't drop off their trailers. They'll they'll dock it. So LTL or, uh, right now I think they're doing LTL, uh, small parcel delivery is the same. It's more expensive, but mm. it's the same. So that's another one that goes uh, for the rules of don't let anyone have all your stuff. Yeah. Um, but anyone that's using uh, Amazon Freight right now, a new system, Amazon Freight, they own a bunch of trailers and they let other truckers, trucking companies use these trailers. Amazon Freight those trailers get dropped and so it was a great system until they got backlogged and now that system of Amazon Freight becomes a danger in terms of your stuff just sitting uh, in a trailer in a parking lot maybe till after Christmas which happened yeah. to me one year <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you're right definitely worth checking with, with warehouse uh, operatives and, and their insight yeah we are uh, our, our 3PO in the UK told us recently that UPS was backlogged and taking two to three weeks to check in whereas other companies were a lot quicker and that was you know super super helpful so yeah no right. that's that's really good thought to to check on that for sure yeah oh man I feel like you've um you've given us loads of nuggets and uh, you know loads of thoughts to to take away there so so helpful um where can people find out more about you about so stocked uh, that kind of thing sure yeah so um so stock.com is where you can learn more about the the tool and then if you want to reach me or um, I do webinars I you know there's a there's free demo you go to sostock.com forward slash connect and you'll be able to to find uh, my contact information uh, if you have any questions for me find uh, the the demo my webinar where I go deeper into some of these these topics as well perfect oh that's amazing well like i say very happy user of so stocked i know that a lot of people out there are going to get a lot out of it so um listen thank you so much for coming on and sharing your time and your thoughts with us it's been uh, super super valuable sure yeah anytime awesome well, awesome guys thanks for joining us on today's episode if you want to check out so stock make sure you do it uh so we'll leave the link in the, the note, show notes below so stock.com and uh, if you have liked the episode do give us a uh, five-star review that would be super super helpful and we'll see you in the next episode really soon